Hello, welcome to my podcast. Uh, my name is Emma, and this is a podcast about natural dyeing and knitting and my dog Rufus, the Bedlington Whippet. Um, more on that later. Um, and yeah, so I've been meaning to do this podcast for some time now, but um, I hadn't really. I hadn't really got a chance since coming back from EYF to record anything, partially because I have no memory available on my phone and I had to delete a lot of things to make some room so that I could record this. So um, I thought I would maybe start off by telling you a little bit about, um, I don't know if it's okay to sit back like this in the podcast and relax. It's uh, Oh, and there's the dog. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, the reason that I was able to reverse, sit down, the, ref the, <laughs> the reason I was able to podcast today was because um, I was kind of half taking the day off because my back was sore. So I've decided to take um, the day off. So I did some odd jobs this morning and I thought I would podcast this afternoon. So, no, the dog's still in my yard. There he is. Hi Rufus. Hello. Um, so, one of the things that was on my list from last year that I wanted to purchase but I didn't was um, one of these bags. Um, made by Woolen Flower for Daughter of the Shepherd and it's made out of Rachel's beautiful fabric which is made from her dad's flock of sheep and um, it has a lovely sturdy feel to it and um, my badge is from the Camel Borneas. they give me a beautiful badge and some stitch markers so I will try and remember to show them to you later and um, as some of you know, I'm a, sorry there's something in my eye, as some of you know I'm not really a big yarn purchaser just because I'm such a slow knitter um, that it just takes me so long to knit with anything that um, yeah I don't need to buy much yarn plus I have all my own yarn but um, you can't go to a yarn festival and not even buy one skein so on my list was um, some used wool. So this was an EYF cast on. So I'm doing quite well. This is fast work for me. So I, I just started, I cast on a shawl. I had started knitting, you see, Tammy Gore's Colour Craze shawl. Um, but I hadn't done brioche before and I brought it with me to the festival and I think it was too tricky for me to get my head around how to do the brioche and keeping track of it as well. So anyway, so I, I bought this used wool and um, it's called Shiaban, hope that's right. And it's in this really nice um, marled kind of grey. I love this shade of grey, like this light cool toned grey. And I just cast on this shawl um, doing a little increase in the middle and an increase at each end and then I think um, in the not too distant future I will finish it off with a nice border I'm not sure what yet maybe some sort of lace or maybe some other type of border I'm not sure I haven't really done many borders so but the wool has a really um, I'll just come closer so you can see this 
The wool has a really nice texture. It's really, um, I would describe it as bouncy, quite bouncy, and um, has a lot of stretch to it. Um, and that's, well, it's not really getting that, but you can see it has a, a lovely kind of character to it, and it feels very woolly, which I like. So I'm really enjoying this. So I got two two 50 gram skeins. I'm into my second 50 gram skein of the Shiaban. Hope I say that right. Sorry if I don't. And I got one skein of Solas, which is a cream base, which is not on me, but it's, it feels very, very similar to this, but in cream. So I might do, I might add a second color into the shawl. I'm not sure. So here's the skein of Solas. As you can see, it does look very similar in texture. I guess it's spun the same way as the um, uh, all their yarns are spun in a similar way. So there's that. And that was a really nice purchase. Um, I also got another bag um, from Woolen Flower. I just can't resist these tweed bags. They're just so... I don't know, they feel really nice to have your knitting in them. And I have two pin badges. Um, Stitch, don't kill my vibe. Yep, that's what it says. And a little one of Tattoo Tans knitting. And these were given to me by Yana and Sini. And these are actually um, Yana's hands knitting. You see them? And these have just gone live in the Lina Magazine new shop that's opened online. So, and I believe they have all the back issues as well um, of the magazines if you wanted to buy any. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I haven't done much. I just took this off the needles when I was in Edinburgh, so I'll just show this. This is um, the Rose colorway. I'll have some more in the next update. And this is how it knits up. So this is my um, unusually bright for me main colour. So that's as far as I've got with that. Um, and it's housed, like I said, in my nice other woolen flower bag. Loving all the tweed at the moment. So my second and final yarn purchase, <laughs> I know, shocking, of EYF was a Garthenor number one lace weight and it's North Ronaldsay. So I have no clue what I'm gonna do with this. I might just make something up again because it's quite relaxing that I found um, that you don't have to, if you're just making it up, you don't really have to think about it too much. So I might um, make something up. I've got two skeins so it will go really far because there's uh, 700 meters in 100 grams and these are 50 grams each so um, again this was something I was wanting to purchase last year and then I just didn't really get around to it and I had probably bought enough yarn already so this year was the year and it's all organic which is amazing and yeah and the shade is called Croft it's a slightly warmer toned grey, I would say. It does have a little hint of brown in it. So, two skeins of that. Last year, when I was at EYF, I was with my friend uh, Claire from Sister Mountain and she got one of these really cute little tape measures from Beyond Measure. And look, you just, anyway, since last year I thought, oh, I'd like to buy one. So <laughs> I got one this year. It's always handy to have a tape measure. I never seem to have enough tape measures. So, and it is by Saozu, Saju. I'm not sure how you say this. I think it's uh, French. So, that has got a little bit of use. 
since I came home. I just like the box that it comes in. I would almost keep it in the box until I'm going to use it. So another kind of big purchase, I suppose, was um, I have a set of interchangeable Knit Pros and a set of interchangeable Chaigu needles. And they, up until now, sorry, this is really, up until now they've been really, um, really messy and chaotic in their own packets that they came in. They were just like, uh, they were quite ugly. So anyway, I seen this big sign and it said, stop the needle chaos. And I thought, oh, I need that. So I got one of these needle, interchangeable needle cases from Bodlina, I think that was Bod, Bodolina. .de. And look at this, it's so organized. So that's pretty cool. See, it's got little sections for the needles and then for the cables and then it's got a wee pocket here. So that has been so good so far and it fits both sets of mine in. Um, and it's so neat looking compared to what it was like before. And of course it's, it's felt it, so that's lovely. Um, this was like the year of project bags and bags. I got this one from Hey Mama Wolf and it's by Minook and it's a plant printed project bag. So I will have to give that a wee iron maybe. But I just thought it was really cool. Um, I was given this little project bag by Ninja Chickens and um, I just think it's beautiful. It's eco printed by lots of various different things and she gave this to me as a gift and I have been using it quite a bit. So as I said, this is the year of the project bags. Um, and a couple of non-yarny related purchases were, there's Rufus, hi Rufus, say hello, say hello, was um, Sophia uh, Camabornia podcast, um, who we were staying with. She had got a, a tin of this. She brought it back to the apartment and we all smelt it and oh it was so nice and we tried a little bit and it's um with Welsh lavender I think so once I tried it then I had to get some I really love hand cream and this is a really really nice one so I got that non-yarn purchase and I also got a few of the mole view hand balms which I really like as well I use them a lot when I'm dying, so I just put them on like before or after I die. So, and they come in this new packaging, which is quite exciting because you push them up at the bottom. So I'm looking forward to trying that. I've just smelt it because I've started straight into the farmer's hand cream. And sorry, I forgot to say this was from a daughter of a shepherd as well. So there's that. And. I got some, they're not here right now, I got some lovely stitch markers as well from Sophia and Dennis. Um, I think they paired up with Patricia of P P P4 Chen on Instagram to make them. They're little um, plywood laser cut um, stitch markers and they're absolutely gorgeous um, but they're in a different bag so I will try and see if I can insert a little picture of them or video. Um, a couple of books I got as well from EYF. I hope you don't mind this. This is all just things I got at EYF. I got the Emily Fodden Knits About Winter. Um, so 
There's a few patterns in here that people have knit in my yarn and I love the look of them so much. So um, I think I would like to knit the, is it the half full moon shawl, shawl scarf? I'd really like to knit it. Although my knit list is so long, I'm not sure when I'm gonna have time for this, but anyway. <laughs> so I got this and the, yeah, the book is really beautifully laid out as well and it's got lovely photographs and it's just very enjoyable to read Emily's writing. She writes in a very visceral sort of um, way. She really describes the landscape in a really nice, interesting way. As well as that, um, Hannah Lisa gave me a gift copy of Making Stories. Um, probably a lot of you have heard of Megan's Stories um, and this is their first um, in print publication I believe and, um, and what a beauty it is, it is gorgeous. The whole feel of the magazine is so nice um, and I love the, the graphic design, I'm such a sucker for a nice graphic design. And all the photographs, I love the photographs, they're really nice. Um, they've chosen an interesting model, which is great. And there's definitely some patterns that I would like to knit in it. Um, like, look at this. Isn't this just lovely? What a nice spread. Um, and there's lots of really interesting articles as well in here. Um, which I love. I just love reading articles and different things. Um, you know, it's really, really interesting to me. Um, um, Rufus, go away. He's trying to take my one remaining sock blocker off me. Naughty. No. Naughty. So yes, I'm, I really enjoyed all the articles. And the photographs are lovely, the graphic design is really nice. And um, there's definitely patterns I would knit in the magazine. Although I kind of always feel like a lot of the time, because I'm such a slow knitter, I buy knitting magazines as much for, well, I didn't buy this one, but other magazines, other knitting magazines, I would buy them as much for the articles as I would for the patterns because I'm such a slow knitter. Like, it, it would take me like half a year to knit like a scarf. So, so. <laughs> but yeah, so I think these are available to order now. So that's interesting. So that's everything that I got from EYF or um, everything I purchased slash what people have given me. So, um, I thought I could maybe show you a couple of recent things that I, well, one recent purchase that I book, I bought. <laughs> it's um, Wild Colour by Jenny Dean. Um, I think I've maybe borrowed an old copy of this from my guild at one point, I'm not sure. But anyway, I just decided to buy it and it's, I just had a flick through it this morning and it seems really interesting. Um, because it's a really good book because um, it gives you the name of the plant and then a photograph of it which is a lot better than a drawing I think and a lot of dye books don't even have how to identify the plants so this is good and then it tells you about cultivation and harvest dyeing procedure when you can pick them when you can sow them, when you can harvest them, and the various different colours that you can get from different mordants and modifiers. So I thought this was, anyone that's interested in natural dyeing, I would say this is the best book I have on it now, but it will take me a while to read it, because um, I'm not only a slow knitter, I'm also a slow reader. <laughs> so there's that. Um, there's a precarious pile of books and yarn sitting here now, so I hope it all doesn't fall to the ground. Um, in the shop recently, I got some of um, my knitting notes by Lina magazine. And these are really nice. Um, 
notebooks where you can keep a track of your projects and um, yarn acquisitions and um, there's some graph pages where you can draw out colour work um, and there's um, a nice little knit and needle conversion chart in here so um, I took one of these for myself and I'm going to start using it soon um, but I thought I could maybe just show you a little bit what it's like inside. Um, I have a few of these in the shop so I will show you what it looks like inside. This is the bit that I like. So I really dived into there, um, all the things I bought and all the things I was given, um, without really telling you um, what it was like, or who I met, or um, any of that type of stuff. So I arrived the day before, the night before the festival officially began. I didn't buy any tickets because I was just not organised enough. Um, so I arrived on the Wednesday night, met everyone at the apartment. So I was staying at a big, lovely, old Georgian apartment with uh, the Camabornias, uh, Sophia, Dennis and Ella. Um, um, and there was also Anna Dunkelgrun. There was Hannah Lisa, HLH Designs, there was Ninja Chickens, there was Ninja Chickens, who is Maria, and there was also uh, the Fox and the Sheep, who was Nina, and I hope I don't miss anyone. <laughs> but yeah, so we all stayed in this big apartment. It was really like luxurious and big and lovely. And um, there was always food in the fridge and we usually ate breakfast or maybe dinner together. So on the Thursday I made my way up to the corn exchange. I had some samples to leave off to loop and also to be inspired fibres. So I knew I didn't have a ticket so I wouldn't be able to get in. So I went up to the door and someone from loop stall um, came out and collected all my samples and delivered them all and um, that was really helpful and then after that I queued up for a ticket I think we got in around like half twelve or something um, and it was really lovely the first day um, I can't remember how many people were there. I think there was quite a lot, but like not like it wasn't like really, really, really super busy, which was nice. So you know, on the first day, um, you often just like have a look around and like plan what you'd like to buy and make at least one or two circuits of the whole um, festival. So that's what I did. And I got chatting to loads of people and um, loads of people came up to me and said, are you Emma from Willy Mama Fibres? And that was quite weird, but it was cool. So thanks everyone for that. And uh, then Thursday night, I think I got pizza with Hannah Lisa. And then just chilled out in the apartment. Everyone was sitting around, we all knit it. It was amazing. I loved it. My knitty family. 
Uh, then on the Friday, I had a day off because I hadn't had a day off in a few weeks and not a proper day off. So I took the day off and went to Holyrood Palace and I did a tour there. Um, I was able to see Mary Queen of Scots bedchambers, which was interesting. And there was a whole, it was really interesting. It was actually an audio guide that takes you round, but I really hate audio guides, but I took this one anyway because there was no other option. And I thought the audio guide was actually really good. So maybe I'll try them again in the, in the future. So I did that and I did a nice walk to get there from the apartment. It was like near Arthur's seat. It's like a, a lowish path beside like a little pond to get there and back. Um, so after I finished the tour, I went to the cafe to get some, some lunch and some tea because I was quite hungry. So I ate that and then I started my knitting. And there was these two ladies sitting next to me who were also knitting. And they said to me, do you want to come and knit with us? So I said, yes, that would be lovely. So we got chatting anyway, and they were from Germany and they had come over for the festival and um, they were both knitting continental super super fast and I think they seen me and thought oh dear she's so slow we must teach her to knit continental so we had an hour or so maybe more of knitting together and then trying to teach me continental knitting um, <laughs> which um, I haven't really practiced since then but um, it was to help with my brioche but I think um, yeah, I haven't really tried since, so I will have to practice. <laughs> um, after that, I went back to the apartment and we had a lovely dinner together that Dennis made and I made some salad. And we all sat around and it was just so lovely. It was really nice. Then on the Saturday, I was back at the festival um, met loads of people again. It was quite busy. Um, started making my purchases, which was exciting. I've probably got other stuff that I bought as well that I forgot to bring here for to show you. But um, I'll if I remember next time, I'll show them. So um, yeah. So and um, that was when I took look quite a lot of photos. Um, with everyone because I was like I haven't took any photos of my whole time that I've been here so far so I took loads of photos on the Saturday and then Saturday night I met up with my friend from primary school and we went out for dinner and that was really nice too we went to somewhere called ransacked black oven so that was nice then on the Sunday, um, one of my friends happened to have uh, a spare ticket for Mech Wool, so she gave it to me. So I went to that event on Sunday briefly before I had to go and catch my flight back home. And then I just came home. I got picked up at the airport and then I was home and I was very glad to see uh, Rufus and my husband again. And that was my time at EYF. It was really nice and it was really, it was quite relaxing. Usually after yarn festivals, I'm really tense and like I have a headache and I need to like lie in a dark room for days. <laughs> but this time it was really, it felt quite relaxing and I don't know why. I think I maybe just took it at a slower pace or something. So um, that was EYF. Um, I haven't any finished objects or anything to show, although I think I finished these mittens. I think I showed them in the last podcast, so sorry if I did. This is the other one. So I've got two. I cast these on when I was doing the trunk show in Bristol at my friend's shop in Alternate Universe in Bristol. Haven't blocked them yet, but I've worn them a little bit. 
So, yeah, I hope to do another little podcast maybe before my next shop update, which is on... I'm, not, well, I'm doing it on a Sunday again. It's at 8 o'clock and that's on Sunday the... 20... No. I'll put it below uh, when the shop update is, <laughs> in case I get it wrong. I will have lots of um, multicolored yarn. I will have natural sock. I will have BFL Massim DK. I will have Wensley Deal Four Ply and DK. I will have just lots of things. So I will do a little podcast before then to show you some colors and to chat with you about my whips and and stuff. So now I'm going to chat a little bit about Rufus, who is my dog. Rufus, do you like knitting? Do you like knitting? Or do you like crocheting? Do you like crocheting? Or sewing? Maybe you like sewing? Are you crafting? Nah. So I asked a few of you if you had any questions about Rufus. The number one question I always get asked about him is, is he an Irish wolfhound? Um, no, he is not an Irish wolfhound. He's a Bedlington Whippet. We got Rufus in December, like halfway through December. Uh, we had been thinking about get, getting a dog for a little while. I wasn't sure, but uh, I just thought it would be too much work. But anyway, we went and got the dog and I love the dog so much. And I, <laughs> all my spare time I spend with the dog. I love the dog. I'm not even a doggy person, but I love Rufus so much. And um, we got him from a family in Tipperary. So he's not a rescue dog. Um, we did look into that option, but um, because we wanted the specific breed, it was very difficult to find it in Ireland. So we had to make this really long journey to Tipperary, which was maybe like five hours there and five hours back or more, I think more, to get him. Um, the family we got him from, the, the dad was president of the Irish, or the Tipperary, um, the Deerhound Association down there. So um, that was really interesting chatting to him because the whole family's really into animals. So they had sheep and ponies and dogs and a cat. Uh, so that was interesting. And we picked him up. Um, he was six months old when we got him. So he's almost 10 months now. And um, he, I had to get him used to doing things the way he should and getting trained up and all of that stuff. So I spent a while teaching him to sit and to give a paw and to come, although that's quite um, dodgy. Well, not dodgy, but he's not really that good at it yet. And um, and to stay, he's very good at stay. So I spent a while doing that, still kind of practicing that all. Um, he had been walking on a lead before we got him, so that was fine. Um, and he really likes the beach. He likes running around with other dogs. He loves other dogs. Um, and he loves dogs that will give a bit of a chase. So he likes greyhounds, he loves whippets and he loves just like running around with them. Any other pointy dog and he is so happy running around with them. But he will run around with any dog, not just pointy dogs. But he loves it when he can run with a pointy dog. Um, someone asked if uh, 
he could choose between a beach, a forest or just an open space. I would have to say that he would pick the beach, I think, because it's uh, so big and so wide and he can just run and run. Um, I think someone asked what's his favourite toy. Um, I would say he's not really interested in balls. Um, he's not interested in fetch, really. He likes his uh, Kong toy and his Nyla bone and he likes... But most of all, he likes like anything that he can rip up. <laughs> so you have to watch that a little bit. He went through a crazy like chewing stage where he chewed everything. And um, so we had to dog proof the whole kitchen area so that he didn't eat everything. So we've become quite tidy. So that's good. You coming to say hello? Are you? Hey Griffiths, he is a he's in there. No. <laughs> so uh what else can I tell you about him? He's very um you coming up beside him? He's very quiet. He doesn't really bark very much. And he he likes cuddles. He likes being close to people. He really, really likes it. And he likes his throat scratched, obviously, all dogs do. And um, the collar he's wearing, actually, I don't know if you can see it. It was from my Instagram friend, Two Woolly Birds. Um, she posted it to him for a little present and he wears it all the time. He loves it. Um, so yeah, that's, I don't know what else you'd like to know about Rufus apart from maybe I'll insert quite a nice bit of footage of him, what he's like during the day here. He lounges a lot and then when we go out for walks, he either sprints around like a crazy thing or just danders beside you. So I'll try and get some footage in here of him. Um, so you can see what he's like. Rufus. Are you a nice boy? Are you a nice boy? Ready? <laughs> That's just Rufus. He loves to lounge. Don't you, Ruf? Don't you, wee Ruf? You love lounging. So you can see by the size of the of the chair, he's not that big. He's um, bigger than Whippet size, um, but no, he's not massive. Um, He'd be the size of a, maybe not quite as big as a Labrador in height and then probably about a third of the, the weight. He's, uh, he's quite pointy. Come on. What do you like doing Rufus? What is it you like doing? Do you like sitting by the fire? I know you do. Hey. Hey there. Hello. Hi. 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 <laughs> oh.
actually like the trees. Sit. Good boy. Lie. Lie. Take it nice. Good boy. All right, so now that you've had a long section about Rufus, I'm popping in here quickly um, to talk about a few things that are gonna be in Sunday's shop update, color combinations, and also my a little bit of my whips since I recorded the first section of this podcast. So I'll start off by showing you some of the yarn and maybe briefly, very briefly, talk about a new base. Um, so I have pretty much all bases in this update apart from the Shetland iron weight and the South Down iron weight. I have some of it actually. I have a little bit of them both but not very much but everything else I have a lot of. So I wanted to show you um, the new base which is the um, BFL Gotland DK. So this is what it looks like. It has the same little halo as the four ply. Um, so this base um, is 75% BFL, 25% Gotland, the same as the four ply. And I recently found out that the Gotland portion of this is actually sourced from Sweden. So I've changed that on the label. Um, I think the mill had just basically made a mistake and tell me where it was from. So this one is not 100% from the UK, it's 25% from Sweden. So yeah, you can see it's quite similar to the four ply with the halo, um, so that's nice. I don't have it in loads and loads of colours, I have it in three colours. I have it in wildflower, I have it in mustard green. And I have it in another colour called Rose, which is a new colourway. I'm trying to see if I can see it anywhere. Let me just grab one. So this is one of my favourite new colourways. It's kind of like peony, but more, not bright, yeah, probably brighter, slightly more washed out reddish. So, I think these three are nice together. So wildflower, rose and mustard green. That's on the new base. I have loads of, ooh, I have a yarn avalanche. I have lots of these shawl kits that you were all asking for. These are for the Vera Valamaki Stay Soft Shawl. Um, so I have loads of these kits. Um, and I also made um, some natural sock kits. And it's like a cream, a light blue and a darker blue. 
so that'd be nice for a stay soft shawl too or any other three color shawl um so they they run in a nice gradient three other colors that um, people have been asking me color combinations these are three that go well together the dark one's called <laughs> the dark one's called tulip and the middle one is called rose and the lightest one is called lush so these are all from the same dye pot so this is an exhaust of this and this is an exhaust of this and that's why they they read so nicely together but also like if you want it to pop in something different you could put in daffodil this one is like kind of like a pale yellow and it I really like it I wasn't sure about it at the start but now I, I love it so much it's really really nice and it goes with everything well I think you can't go wrong with natural dyes all the colors really go together anyway and um, so yeah that was called daffodil the yellow one this is a new colorway it's like a greeny aqua blue and it's called clover so again it would go really nicely with daffodil and maybe mustard the mustard green possibly it's quite cool or maybe it would go also with the modified spindrift and another combination that I really like is these three spindrift modified mustard green and tulip so those are really nice together um, so I also have the Wensley Deal 4 ply in tulip so I have a bit of Wensley Deal 4 ply in this update so I have tulip rose and daffodil I think that's a really nice combo there I think they look nice together and of course I have orchid I made tons of this color because you all seem to love it um, and because it has lots of different colors and it goes really well with so many colors so like jasmine is a color it's quite neutral it's like a, a cool toned neutral and it goes with so much it's like a very 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 pale purple so it goes with everything it really does go with everything so if you're looking for like a neutral that goes with everything I would say jasmine is your color oh and this is wildflower so another same color as this a nice purpley color so yeah Um, this is a colorway that I've reinvented. It's called Coast. It's like a kind of nice subtle blue. Looks kind of more purple on the screen, but it's definitely more blue. And it goes really well with jasmine mustard green. I don't know if y'all like mustard green as much as I do. Or daffodil. That's really nice. Jasmine, Coast and daffodil. That's a nice combo. Um, I do also have party in the common room this was so popular the last time it sold out so quickly and I made loads the last time and I made loads this time so it's got again it's got so many different colors in it it makes it it would be so so fun to knit with and it goes really well with um, peony also goes well with jasmine also goes well with mustard green if you want to bring out the more yellow parts of this so yeah I mean I also have part in the common room on Wednesday deal DK the part in the common room comes out a little bit different every time but so I would say if you're looking for a sweaters quantity be sure to alternate skeins because they all look as if they're from di different dye lots um, even though sometimes they aren't so just be careful with that if you're going to knit with it and um, obviously if it's socks or something it doesn't matter as much but um, a garment definitely I would be alternating skeins so that is I have all this yarn here so I'm gonna put it away and then I'll show you my whips 
but I hope that gives you an idea of what colours go together, what I have in this update. I mean, I literally have so much stuff. It's unbelievable how much I've made. And um, so I think there'll be something for everyone and I'd be really surprised if you didn't get what you wanted because I made quite, usually quite a few of each colour. I do have a few sample skeins that are, there's only one of them. Um, and they will be a little bit cheaper so if you're looking for that that could be useful so I'm going to put all this away and I'll show you my whips so now that I'm all packed away I'm going to show you my whips um, the first thing you've probably seen this on my on my grid um, was I'm almost finished this t-shirt which is um, the 101, oh no, sorry, the 100 Acts of Sewing number one shirt. So I made a different front and the back because I ran out of fabric to do the whole thing spotty. And I'm just attaching the bias binding. So I'm going to hand stitch that and I should have that done hopefully this weekend. I'm off on Monday, um, so maybe I'll do it then or maybe I won't. <laughs> But um, that also means your orders will be packed on Tuesday from the shop up to it. Um, so that is one whip. That's a super easy pattern. I'm sure you've I've showed it on here before. I think I've made a few of them now. But it's um, really easy. And the spotty fabric is from Ray Stitch. And the linen, the pink linen, is from Baird McNutt. Which is just down the road from me. Um, the other thing two or three other things actually um is my color create shawl which i you can see the little cool pin badges um that are from lina magazine they gave me them at eyf but i think you can actually buy them in their shop now they have an online shop where you can buy back issues and stuff um so this was the shawl that i was getting a little bit confused with the brioche but when I figured out the brioche oh my goodness I am so in love with knitting brioche and also with this pattern which is beautiful I love all the wee yarn overs and everything so the this is the color crease shawl by Tammy Gore and um, it's basically a really good pattern to show off lots of colors so I took one of my mini skein sets from the last update, add a few colours. Uh, my main colour is Raws, so there's some of that in Sunday's shop update. And um, yeah, I just figured it out. I found a couple of good tutorials for brioche on YouTube um, English style because I found loads for continental style but none for English style. So now that i figured out how to do that, I'm very happy with myself and um, I'm really really enjoying this so I think it's going to be quite a long shawl um, so yeah I'm really enjoying this I, I think I sized down the needle size as well in case you're interested and I know I'm really bad at adding stuff to Ravelry that I'm making absolutely useless at it I just forget about it and then it just becomes another admin task and then I just don't do it. But I will get around to it. I'll add them all at the one time. Um, this is my little project bag I got from Hey Mama Wolf. Um, it's by Minook and it's plant stumped, I believe. Um, I started another Ridari. I'm actually going to be knitting two of these this year. But um, this is my one that I'm knitting at the moment. You can't really see the colour that well here. But I started this a um, couple of weekends ago and I just pick it up if I want something easy to do. So um, I said I was going to be knitting two of these. One of, the, one of them is for me and one of them is for my granny. Who um, I offered to knit her something a little while back. But she didn't want to say yes and she didn't want to say no because she thought there was so much work in it and she couldn't ask me to do it and anyway 
we got around all that and eventually um, I convinced her that she would really like one and she said she would really like one and I asked her what colours would she like it in and she said oh just the same one as yours so we're gonna have matching sweaters <laughs> and the rest of my family don't wear like anything with wool because they think it's scratchy disappointing guys disappointing <laughs> so anyway my granny uh, is very excited to get her sweater so I'm going to be working on that periodically at the same time as this probably I'll knit a sleeve and then knit one of her sleeves and then start the body and then yeah just like that and earlier I was saying about stitch markers from the Camaborns, Camaborne podcast and I have them here so they're so cute they're made by P410, if you know her, who makes the really nice sock blockers. So they all have a little different love and play, that's their tagline. So they have a, a nice podcast, so yeah. So that's their little stitch markers. And the only other thing that I wanted to really talk about here is the new club the new yarn club that is launching on sunday and um, which is i'm very excited about because it's a yarn and tea club so i have been thinking about doing this maybe six months ago maybe more and i hadn't had a chance i hadn't really got around to doing it and um i just thought oh I think I could, I think I would have time to do it now. So I had contacted Suki T to have a chat with him to see if they, if they would sell me some tea, <laughs> some loose leaf tea. So Suki T is a Belfast brand and um, they do the most beautiful loose, loose leaf teas. Um, I buy stuff off them all the time. So um, they said they would sell me some tea for my club. So how I'm going to run it is I'm going to open it monthly. So you buy one month at a time and it will happen randomly throughout this year. And if it goes well, I might continue into 2020. So you will get a skein of natural sock and a surprise loose leaf tea along with it. So um, it, it could be, it'll probably be a combination of caffeinated or green or white or an infusion or whatever but it will be a surprise every month something different and um they're a really nice company and they do like a lot of fair trade teas and um i really like them and they win a lot of um awards and stuff so um so yeah so this is going to be the yarn and tea club the first instalment goes up on Sunday night. It will stay open for two weeks or until it has sold out. Um, if you buy anything else with your yarn club, it will ship with the club. So that will be mid-May. And um, I think you're really gonna like this. I think knitting and tea go so well together. And I literally have like, so many sicky teas so I've tried them like so many of them so it's going to be really fun to pick one for you guys um so yeah I hope you like this idea as much as I do and another cool thing is tea is consumable so you're not going to have this like hanging around for ages it's so good you'll just want to drink it up like straight away so I like that I kind of like like at Christmas or like birthdays or what whatever I really like getting like consumable presents like stuff not necessarily stuff that's going to yeah just be sitting around the house so that's exciting um so yeah I I plan to do it I'm going to do it in I'm going to open it Sunday um, so that will be, I guess it'll be going out mid-May, as I said, and then I might do another one or two later on in the year. So it's just for one month. Um, at some point I might do a three-month one, but at the moment I'm not going to. It's just easier logistically 
to do it on a monthly basis and yeah so I hope you like that and um, you can check out Suki Tea on their website which is probably sukitea.com the other thing is I think I showed this to you earlier in the podcast but I have got to the point now where I have actually knitted enough on the shawl and I'm going to start knitting a border um yeah I I was either going to do like a nice lace panel or do a border like a leaf border maybe I have a book that has a lot of um like patterns for like kind of well like stitch patterns I suppose so I'm going to look at that and decide what would fit in with my stitch count so I think I am at the point now where I have 10 plus 1 so it should fit a lot of stitch patterns in but I'm not a designer so I actually don't have a clue what I'm doing so <laughs> this could turn out kind of interesting and this is another little Camabornia oops <laughs> there we go stitch marker so yeah I will show you that when I have um more of it finished so I hope you enjoyed the podcast and um I'm going to try and be better at getting these up more regularly and um <laughs> a little bit more briefly maybe this is going to end up quite a long one so um, I hope you enjoyed it and I will chat to you soon.